Good one. Okay. Thank you very much, Luca, uh, for this uh, nice talk. Uh, it's now actually me alone because Tom Palstra had to leave. Uh, so let me actually, before we continue, we go into the discussion with Luca, uh, thank uh, Tom again. I mean, he is a co-organizer, but also for chairing. He is also the president of the university in Twente and uh, there were some other duties now. And so the last uh, hour I'm actually doing alone. So are there questions to Luca? I actually, I don't see a, a written question at the moment. Uh, uh, so maybe someone wants to raise the hand. All right, a question. Okay. I mean, I cannot really ask a question because I mean, uh, Luca is really the key person in, in this nomad center of excellence uh, on the things he just talked to and on the artificial intelligence. So I would say actually, uh, unfortunately, we don't have a question uh, to, to him at the moment, uh, but, but he actually was mentioning several posters. And uh, I'd like to use this chance again to remind you that there is a poster session tonight and tomorrow night and just really take the chance and look really what has been built there. There is actually a, a hands up by Julia Gully. Is that, uh, let me see. Uh, Julia, can you talk? Yes, hi. Uh, thank, thanks, Luca, for your talk. So uh, it, it's a question that in a way has already been asked also by other, uh, two other uh, speakers. At the end of your talk, you mentioned that uh, you are um, suggesting that people also um, you know, have notebooks or Jupyter notebooks or whatever, right, to describe their calculation and that they make those available. So what are the incentives for uh, making those available? So again, you know, a matter of incentive and how do you convince people to do so? For, you know, I do think this is a great idea. I think people should do the, this, but how do we convince people to do this and how do we convince people that they would benefit themselves by doing that? Oh, thank you for the question. Um, honestly, I haven't thought that one has to actively uh, like uh, give incentives to, 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 to people. I, I see that especially the younger generation uh, is, is very happy to use, uh, uh, say, uh, pieces of code that are readily available. So, uh, Say last last week uh, I was mentioning uh, some some clustering algorithm that has been essentially very recently published, and and one of my postdoc in like a matter of hours came back with the result of analysis with that method because the code was available in uh, in some uh, in some notebook. Uh, so I think this this uh, kind of attitude with with the uh, self aggregate in a way. Uh, uh, having uh, tools ready and, and tutorial notebooks that explain how to use uh, the, the, the methods uh, on, on simple applications uh, uh, will be uh, its own incentive, I, I would say. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I think actually Claudia has a comment on that and then we go to the questions and answers, Claudia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, hi, Julia. Uh, actually, I just wanted to add that you could also see this as kind of a supplementary material to a paper. So if you publish a paper on the on the algorithms or on the on the physics behind, you can, up, can upload uh, a notebook which demonstrate what you have published. And so it gives more credit also to your publication. And I think this is an incentive because it adds more information to your paper. Yeah, thanks, Claudia. I, I totally okay. agree. So I, I hope that it becomes uh, more and more uh, a matter of habit, as much as it has become already a, a habit to, to uh, make the data available. But the data sometimes is not enough, right? So uh, even the analysis uh, on, on top of the data uh, would be uh, useful. I, can I just... Uh... Say so. For, I, I just to clarify, I I am a big fan of that, <laughs> and as you will see, you know, in my talk, I'm actually I, I I would like to push for that, and uh, um and I see the benefits. Uh, I also see some uh, resistance uh, uh, in uh, uh, 
you know, some students and postdoc and the community at large to put some effort to make uh, data and procedures and workflow available uh, in what I, I think should be the right way and putting time to make those available. And I think that we still have to overcome that barrier. But uh, I, 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 don't, I just don't want to, you to misunderstand my question. I'm a big fan of what you're proposing. <laughs> No, I mean, yes, I, I can imagine. Uh, I, I think it's uh, also this is, is uh, uh, changing fast. Uh, sure. Let's say uh, new students, uh, when I say student, I really mean now, say, bachelor students that are coming for the bachelor thesis or something. They essentially are native speaker of Python. <laughs> <laughs> they actually come with a notebook to present their results. So it's, I don't even have to ask. So they really organize their, their work in a notebook and they show me directly the, note, the notebook. In, in, I think in a short time, it will be difficult to ask people to make slides in, in the traditional sense. Everybody's thinking in this, uh, this way. So at the same time, maybe some postdoc uh, uh, is reluctant because uh, they don't know very well Python. So yes, uh, that can be a problem. Okay, I think we have to go on. Uh, there's actually several more questions, but we have only time for one, and I like really yeah. to read the one by Patrick Rinke. The other ones we will answer uh, in written form. So Patrick Rinke asks, how far can we extend the ontologies? Could we include also experimental data in MetaInfo? Uh, okay, yes, I, 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 would, I would distinguish uh, the, 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 the metadata schema uh, fr from the ontology. So the, the metadata schema is kind of the backbone on, on which uh, you, you build the ontology. Uh, uh, yes, we, we, we can and should uh, extend the meta info to, to experiments. Uh, but actually, it, it could be more useful to have a kind of independent uh, metadata schema. Uh, and use the ontology in order to link them in the sense that uh, one can uh, uh, define that the, the material is identified by a chemical formula in a space group. And then the moment that the link between the calculation and the experiment has been done, uh, then you have access to uh, the information that come from both uh, metadata schemas. Uh, that would be my, my vision rather than just trying to extend uh, uh, meta info that is already quite complicated uh, with, the, with more and more uh, uh, metadata. Yeah, yeah and, I mean, this is actually work just going on right now. Uh, and, and, and yes, yes. Okay, I think, uh, thank you again, Luca, for this nice talk. And, and you got more questions, which we will then answer later.